We've seemed to interrupt our thought that Jesus being the Son of Man has something to do with judgment, John 5, verse 27. Offering compassion is a judgment call, too. Welcome to the Bible Study Pal podcast. My name is Greg Circle, the preacher for the Church of Christ that meets in Palmyra, Indiana. On today's episode of the podcast, we continue our study of the Gospel according to Mark, the book of the month for January 2023. We begin in Mark chapter 5, verse 21, and go through Mark chapter 6, verse 6. If any questions or thoughts arise during this study, we encourage you to make them known in the comments section below. Verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. Let's get into the study. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. Jairus implores. We continue the thought from our last episode that Jesus cares and has compassion because he is the Son of Man. We discussed how Jesus had shown compassion to his disciples by hearing their cry for help and stilling the stormy sea. Then disembarking on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, he exercised the legion of demons in a garrison man, probably a Gentile, note the swine, who had bowed down before the Lord. Today we begin with a synagogue official falling at Jesus' feet. It appears that we are back in or near Capernaum, so this is a man who has probably been following Jesus. We're not told of his political views. Is he a Pharisee or a Sadducee or a zealot? It doesn't matter. What matters is he reacts to Jesus in the same way as the Gerasene demoniac. He fell at his feet. Also notice a word that carries over from the other side of the sea as well. Jairus implored. If you go back through chapter 5, you'll notice this word occurring four times in the Gerasene story. The man implored, verse 10. The demons implored, verse 12. The townsfolk implored, verse 17, and then the healed man implored again, verse 18. Here, Jairus implores, verse 23. The word implore is the verb form of the word we often associate with the Holy Spirit from John chapters 14 through 16. Paraclete, often translated helper or comforter. The verb means to call to one side for help. The noun is the one called. And the idea, I think, is best illustrated with a defense attorney. Jesus is shown here as the one who defends against demons and death, against sickness and sleep. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 30. A silent imploring. As Jesus follows Jairus to his home, the crowd surrounding him, probably impeding his movement, A woman who wouldn't have been able to otherwise sneaks up to Jesus. All eyes were on Jesus. No one noticed the woman with the hemorrhage pushed through the crowd. We're given a little bit of her medical history. The issue was chronic. She had been suffering for 12 years. It was costly. She had spent all that she had. It was cureless. And the doctors were clueless. It kept getting worse. She, like Jairus, knew of Jesus' miracles. She knew that he could heal her. Even if she just touched his garments, she knew she would be saved. He didn't even have to know about it. That last sentence, though, is her only incorrect assumption. Jesus is God. And so Jesus perceived the power that had gone forth from him, and he queried a quizzical question. Who touched me? Mark chapter 5, verses 31 through 34. Your faith has made you well. The disciples' answer was basically, that's an odd question. Everyone, everyone has touched you, Jesus. Did Jesus not know who it was? That's not very omniscient, all-knowing, of God. I believe he asked the question to tease the woman into the open. All eyes were now turned toward that woman who didn't want to be seen because they would have pushed her away for being unclean. Those who would have recoiled at seeing her were now turned toward her as she came forward telling the whole truth. The Son of Man had judged this woman worthy of his compassion because she believed she would be healed of something so impossible to heal in such a simple and silent way. She implored Jesus by her actions only, and her faith had made her well. Mark chapter 5, verses 35 through 37. Your daughter is dead. You might imagine Jairus' frustration with that woman. She slowed the Lord's progress towards his home and deathly ill daughter. She had been sick for 12 years. Could she not wait 12 more minutes? It got worse. Friends came from his house to give him some bad news. 
your daughter is dead. Moreover, it's interesting how they applied their knowledge to the situation and said, it's hopeless. Jesus can't do anything now. Let him go do his own thing. He's too late. Did Jairus get angry? Perhaps the anger began boiling up, but Jesus offers him some comfort. Stop fearing. Keep on believing. Jairus needed to follow the woman's example. She didn't fear the crowd. She believed. She believed in Jesus. She believed in who he was. She believed in the Son of Man. She trusted in him, and she followed through. Mark chapter 5, verses 38 through 43 laughs at a funeral. Jesus enters the house filled with commotion. The honor due a family so important as the synagogue officials would have necessitated as many mourners as could be gathered and paid. I don't know that the family would have hired professional mourners. It may be equivalent to our buying funeral flowers today. Perhaps this is how they let the family know they were in their thoughts. But Jesus tells them, these professional mourners, that the girl is simply sleeping and their mourning Their weeping, their wailing became laughter, a mocking laughter, but laughter nonetheless. What kind of people laugh at a funeral, especially the funeral of a child? Side note, arguments could be made for remembering the person's sense of humor. As an example, I don't want my body to be brought out until the preacher starts preaching my funeral service, because the only time I ever want to be late is for my funeral. But the laughter in this story may be the result of the insincerity of the professional mourners. Jesus tells them that their services are no longer required and sends them out. Only the Lord, three of the apostles, Peter, James, and John, and the mother and father remained. He took the child by the hand and told her to get up. And she did. Immediately. She walked. Immediately. She was deathly ill, and she immediately got up and walked, and immediately the family was astounded. Note how many times Mark uses that word, immediately. That is a key word for him throughout this gospel account. You could imagine that the mourning once more changed to laughter, but this time the appropriate kind. Jesus then issues two commands. First, we return to the don't tell anyone about this command. Again, his focus is on the teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God. Once he heals, once he cures all of the diseases and casts out all the demons, the danger is, as we'll see in a little bit, that nobody wants him there anymore. He's done his job in their mind, but they forget there's more. Second, he tells them to give the girl something to eat. He reminds them of their responsibility to care for their daughter. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. The Hometown Prophet Mark says that Jesus returned to his own part of the country. I take this to be Capernaum proper. He was outside of Capernaum to heal Jairus' daughter, but this is Capernaum proper. And I know he is Jesus of Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem and moved. He could have moved again and had to be distinguished from another Joshua in town, or other Joshuas wherever he was. Luke 4 does mention Jesus being in Nazareth and saying something similar to what we read here, or even exactly the same. And Mark is not necessarily writing about things in chronological order, so it could be that Mark is using an earlier event to summarize why he needed to move on from the region of Galilee. What I'm saying is this could be Nazareth, Either way, though, the lesson is going to be the same. Jesus taught in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and the people questioned his authority. Where did he get this wisdom and power? He's only human, just like us. He has a job. He's a carpenter. His mother is here with us. He has at least six siblings, and they took offense. They gave him no honor. He was without honor in his hometown and among his relatives. And we've already seen how his mother and brothers wanted to bring him home because they thought he had lost his senses earlier in the book of Mark. They saw his power. They saw his abilities. And they wouldn't listen to him. And so it says he couldn't heal them. I wonder, maybe no one else was sick. Maybe he had already healed them all except for the few stragglers. Maybe they were like those he spoke to in John chapter 6 verses 26 and 27. You seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life. Like those people from John chapter 6, the people of Jesus' hometown were filled. As soon as everyone was physically helped, what more did they need from him? 
They didn't believe. There was no further desire for his compassion. So the Son of Man left. Ye must be born again, again. Ye must be born again, again. I verily, verily say unto thee, We invite you to join us as we worship our Lord and study His Word each Sunday morning at 9.15 a.m. for Bible classes for all ages, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. for two distinct worship services, and each Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for another chance to study and discuss God's Word. Occasionally, we may alter the p.m. service times for a special event. Please check palmyrachurchofchrist.org or our Facebook page for the schedule for the week. If you have any questions or would like to have a Bible study in person or by correspondence, email preacher at palmyrachurchofchrist.org or call 812-364-6215. Thank you for listening.